Hello friends and welcome to your week ahead Taroscopes with me Intuitive Renee. This week I have decided to use, I know I say it every week, <laughs> two of my favourite decks. I have got the Roots and Wings Oracle, it's one I haven't used on my channel for quite some time and I have got my all time favourite the Unfolding Path Tarot. So if this is your first time finding Taroscopes welcome and if you are a regular extra special warm welcome to you as well. So how does this work? Well I have recorded, well I'm about to record, a short message for every single sign of the zodiac giving you guidance, insight and inspiration into the next seven days. I work my week from Monday to Sunday um, so we are looking at the 9th, I think it is, I haven't looked at the date yet, the 9th to the 15th um, of October 2023. So the way that, um, as I said, I am going to record a message for each sign of the zodiac. If you know what your sun sign is, and everybody knows what their sun sign is, you're welcome to watch a sun sign. If you do know what your rising sign is, you're welcome to watch that one as well. Your rising sign is probably a more accurate depiction of who you are in the way that your, your um, life unfolds. So yeah, if you know your rising sign, rather watch that one. But if you only know your sun sign, absolutely fantastic. Um, and if you are watching on um, a computer, then in the time time bar down below, you will see that there are timestamps for each sign to take you straight there. And if you are watching on a cell phone or a tablet or something, open up the description where we, we talk about, um, you know, what this video is about. Open that up and you will find timestamps that will take you straight to your portion of the video and all you do like if you are Sagittarius as an example when you see Sagittarius in the list click the little time next to the word Sagittarius and it'll jump you straight to that portion of the video so you don't have to scroll through the whole lot you don't have to try and fast forward and rewind um, I know that can be quite uh, quite quite challenging to say the least so to try and make it as easy as possible for each one of you there are timestamps just click and it'll take you straight there and like I said if you are on a computer um, on the little red time bar down the bottom here, you'll see it's broken up into sections and you just click the section that is you, applicable to you and it'll take you straight to that portion. So if you want to watch for family members, so if you want to see how your partner's week is going to go or, you know, a friend or a colleague or a child or a whatever, you can navigate um, through the, the, the timestamps quite easily. And friends, please, if you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button. Um, I am just a small channel. I am just a just a person trying to, to make a little difference in this world. And your help and support will help to make my channel grow. So if you can subscribe, hit that like button, um, comment below, let me know how you enjoy the reading because all of those things tell YouTube that um, this video is worth sharing to a couple of other people and I would so appreciate your help and support with that just to grow the channel, just to reach more people so that we can help more people live a better inspired and motivated life because that's what I am all about. Right, I'm going to stop babbling <laughs> and let's get straight into it. We are going to start with Aries, we're always, always going to start at the beginning of the zodiac and move our way around. I shall see you at your zodiac. Right, Aries, hello and welcome. Let's get into your reading and see what this week ahead has in store for you. So as always, we start with the Oracle. Going to give it just a shuffle. We are wanting to know what is the theme for the week ahead for all Aries energies. What will you be navigating and what will you be dealing with this coming week? So Roots and Wings Oracle says that your focus for the week ahead is going to be breath. It's going to be breath. I like that. And the fact that we have the birds that are flying through the sky, you know, they are flying on breath. They are flying on air. So sometimes, and I have to say, I have to be completely honest, Aries, and say that the last couple of weeks, for everybody, and you know, I am a fellow Aries, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm with you on this one. <laughs> the last couple of weeks have been a bit challenging. It's been a bit exhausting. It's been a bit manic even, you know. So we're dealing with a lot. There's a lot going on. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> when we stress and, and when we panic and when we get fearful, one thing that we tend to do um, is forget to breathe. You know, we, we forget. And sometimes what we have to do, because this is not breathe, this is breath. Um, and I think it's saying to you is to just let your worries go on the on the breath. So as you exhale, as you just let that breath out, let your worries and, and your stresses, because sometimes it's about understanding 
what you can have an effect on and what you can't. And if it's something that you have no control over, sometimes it's just easier to just let it go. Just let it go. You know, and, and when you send something on the wind, if you send something on the wind, you know, it, it's going to go where it needs to go. So, tarot was shuffled. Let's cut the deck. And let's see how um, Unfolding Path Tarot wants to contribute to, to Breath. So our first card we have is the World. Our second card that we have is the Tower. Oh my gosh, Aries. And our third card that we have. Like, can we just have three awful cards? Like, can we just? <laughs> All right. Let's just lay them out a little bit here, Aries, and let's have a look. So the first thing we have to talk about is the fact that we do have three major arcana. So whenever we get a majority of major arcana, it's like it's like a, a huge big stop sign that says to you, stop, pay attention, okay? So we need to, right? We are. We, we understand that we're just going to breathe. We're just going to trust. We're just going to inhale and exhale our breath. Inhale and exhale. And that's all we're going to do because stuff is changing, all right? So Aries, what this is saying to you, the first card we have is the card of the world, all right? And the world, I mean, there she is dancing, right? She is swaying those beautiful hips of hers. She is dancing because she has come full circle. Can you see the floral wreath behind her? She has come full circle. She has accomplished and achieved something that was relevant and significant to her. And she's come full circle. And it's a case of like, you know, when you've been working so hard towards something and you accomplish it, like there's a little bit of celebration. But then tomorrow, it's like life goes back to normal and you just have to start all over again. So this is where we're at. We're at a point in our lives now where we have achieved and accomplished something really important, really significant. And now it's a case of acknowledging that, recognizing that, but also starting the next chapter. And looking at these two, two really tough, hard cards, the Tower and the Death card, saying to us that whatever is coming up next for us, Aries, is completely and utterly different from what we had before. And the only way that we can navigate it is by just focusing on our breath, okay? Recognize, all right, so that we, we, we've we completed, tick. We've achieved, tick. We've done, tick. Now what? Okay, now what? So we need to just catch our breath. We need to just, you know, just spend time in our breath. Just breathing, just breathing, just breathing. Because breathing grounds us, it connects us, it calms us, it does all of those kind of things. Let's talk about the Tower card. So Aries, the Tower card is the card of collapse. It's the card of ruin. It's the card of destruction. All right. So, yeah, I mean, that doesn't sound fabulous, does it? <laughs> of course not. OK, but the Tower card is also saying to us that sometimes the thing that we have spent so hard erecting and building in our lives, our morals, our structures, our understandings, that sometimes over a period of time, it, it becomes no longer relevant and no longer valid. And sometimes the only way to to move beyond that is to actually bring it down to crumble it, to reduce it down to rubble, um, so that you can re-establish and rebuild. And in so doing, that's where this beautiful death card comes into play, because the death card is about revolutionary change, okay? Um, where we go from one, let me do it this way, from one form to another form. And the form that we're going to here, we've got the moon in the background here, and here we've got the sun in the background there, or silver and gold, however you want it. They're the same, but they're opposite, okay? Because that's what the death card represents, the same but opposite. So we used to have a huge, big, skinny tower. When we rebuild, we may decide that we want a one level, that we don't want to do stairs. We don't want to do upstairs anymore. We might want to do everything on the ground level. So it's the same, but it's different. It's still our home. It's still our structure. It's still our place of safety but it is completely different. So Aries, this is a week to reinvent. This is the week to restructure. This is a week where, where you can make some big, bold moves, even if it is a bit scary, even if it is a bit daunting. But understand that the way that you come into this week and the way you exit this week are going to be completely different. And all you have to do is breathe. All you have to do is focus on your breath. When things get scary and overwhelming, when you feel a bit daunted, a bit afraid, just breathe. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. And with every exhale, just send your worries on the air with the birds and just let it go out to the universe. You don't have to hold on to anything. So Aries, looks like we are in for an interesting week. Let's see how it unfolds. I am sending you all much love and many blessings. And until we connect again, 
Take care, Aries. Taurus, hello and welcome. Welcome to your week ahead, Tariscopes. I have got the cards on the table. Let's get shuffling and see what this week ahead has in store for you. So we're going to give one shuffle to the Roots and Wings Oracle. And uh, let's see what is your theme for the week ahead for all Taurus energy. Shuffled, cut, taking one card. Roots and Wings says your theme for the week ahead is, oh, I love that, joy. How fabulous is that, Taurus? Couldn't ask for a better card. Look at that sun. Look at the happiness. Look at the joy. That is just wonderful. Let's give the um, Unfolding Path Tarot a shuffle while we discuss and chat about joy. I am going to say to you, you know, out of all the words in the dictionary, <laughs> my favorite is joy. Joy is my word. Joy is the way that I live my life. Joy is the way that I do all things. So I only do things if it brings me joy. Yes, we have our chores that we have to do. But if I have to do something that I really don't enjoy doing, I make sure that I bring joy into it somehow. How? Through dance, through music, through tarot, through, <laughs> through whatever it is. I always find a way to bring joy into what I do. And this is important for you this week, Taurus. So it's not a case of saying, okay, everything's just going to be joyful, that you don't have to do anything, that you can just, you know, be, be whoever. You actually need to do things to bring, to promote, and to attract joy into your life. Okay. I am going to stop shuffling the cards. Let's cut the deck. And let's lay out and see where, what, and how is joy in your life this week. So our first card we have is the Page of Wands. I love that little look on her face, that expression. Second card that we have, Beautiful Wheel of Fortune. And our third card that we have is the Lovers. So we've got joy, joy, and joy. <laughs> right, I'm running out of space on my desk. I need to find a place to put the tarot that they're out of the way. Right, so Taurus, let's get into it and let's have a look what these cards are saying to you. So the theme is joy. We have to find it, we have to make it, we have to do it, we have to experience it, we have to have it, okay? That is the theme for the week ahead. We start off with our page of wands, and as I said, you just look at that expression on her face. She She's like, oh, something's happening. Oh, there, there's that kind of, that, that excitement and that curiosity and that, that, but you know, she's doing something and something that she's probably not done before. And she's probably not even that sure as to how she's done it, <laughs> but she's doing it and she's loving it. And she's, you know, she's just embracing it. And and that's what you've got to do. So if there's something that you've been dying to try, but you've been a bit nervous, you've been a bit apprehensive, this is the week definitely to do it. And you may be pleasantly surprised as to how well it actually works out for you. We also have the Wheel of Fortune. And as its name says, Wheel of Fortune. You know, but this is also what we call the Karma card. Okay, because the Wheel of Fortune is the card that says the wheel turns. There is nothing that you can do to slow down the wheel turning. The wheel is always constantly in motion, okay? It's just turning and turning and turning all the time. You can't slow it down, you can't stop it, you can't change it, but what you can do is you can get on and enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. The Wheel of Fortune is also saying to you, Taurus, that you've had a really, maybe you've had a couple of difficult days, a couple of difficult weeks, a couple of difficult months even, and it's like this week, you know, things are shifting. The energy is definitely lightening up. The energy is definitely better. The energy is definitely more enthusiastic. And this is a week where you get to appreciate and enjoy it, but you have to engage. You have to participate. You have to get on the wheel. And as that wheel is turning and turning and turning, you get to try new things. You get to find joy in your life. Let's talk about this lover's card. So yes, we all know what the word lovers means. You know, two people coming together with love and happiness and joy in their hearts. But the lovers card actually has a lot more interpretation, a lot more meaning. So yes, here we have two people who are clearly in love, clearly passionate, clearly besotted with each other, if I can put it that way, you know. They are, you know, ready for, ready for some passion. But the lover's card is saying that, you know, one thing we have to understand is that when two people are together, there are always consequences. There are always, they had to choose each other, first of all. And a lot of people, like in, in, my, in my daily consults with clients, I'll often get a client say to me, but you know, why do I have such bad luck in relationships? Or why can't I find the perfect person? Well, you're choosing the people that you choose to be in a relationship with. You're making a decision that, yes, this is a, a potential relationship or this is somebody. So you are making the choice to be with that person. 
and you have the choice to stop that <laughs> if it's not bringing you joy if it's not making you happy if it's not fulfilling you if it's not making you feel excited to try new things if it doesn't feel amazing and fabulous and wonderful maybe you need to start re re looking at it because the lovers card is the card of consequence of choices that you've made a choice that you made based on passion based on enthusiasm based on love okay but there is consequences and if you're not happy, if your choice wasn't correct for whatever reasons, you are the only one who can change it. And when you choose to enter into a relationship, you have chosen to enter into that. So understand that the connections that you have with other people are connections that you made consciously. And if it doesn't bring you joy, it's time to, 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 to question all right, because look here, we have got three amazingly positive cards saying to us that life should be just a barrel of fun. Life should be exciting, life should be fabulous, and life should be wonderful. And if it's not, if you don't have joy in your life, it's time for you to change the choices, the decisions that you've made, to try new things, to understand that this is your karma, that this is how it has to go, so that you can find people that you want to spend your life with. So Taurus, interesting week for you to analyze, to look, to experience, and to love. I love that. Leaving it right there, sending you much love and many blessings. And until we connect again, take care Taurus. Gemini, hello and welcome. Let's get into your reading and see what this week ahead has in store for you. So starting off with the Roots and Wings Oracle, just going to give it a single shuffle. And let's cut the deck and see what is the theme for Gemini energy for the week ahead. So Roots and Wings says the theme for the week ahead for Gemini is humility. Humility. You know what? Like, I love that. We've got this beautiful sunshine. We've got this mountaintop. And we have got sheep. I love sheep because I'm a yarn addict. Love all things yarn related. So I'm going to shuffle the tarot while we talk about humility. So what does humility mean? It means about being humble. It means about recognizing and realizing that you are no different to anybody else. That we all do the same things. We might do it in different ways. We may have our own little quirks. You know, you may, your coat may grow quicker than somebody else's. Um, your coat may grow slower than somebody else's. Yours might be a little bit dirty and shabby where everybody else's is clean and neat and tidy. But it's about being humble and recognizing that you are no different and no better than anybody else. So, you know, humility is, is a beautiful uh, um, value or quality to have in life. And sometimes, sometimes we have it and sometimes we don't. Let's see what the tarot says around where it is for you. Do you need to have it? Do you have it? Do you have too much of it? Do you not have enough of it? Let's have a look and see. So tarot card number one, we have, oh, look at that, our Knight of Cups. He looks so humble, doesn't he? He looks like he's just fabulous. <laughs> we have the Ace of Swords. And finally, we have the Ten of Wands. All right, let's have a look at this Gemini. So, just trying to evenly distribute on screen, on the table. Okay, so Gemini, the message that's coming across for you here, right, is a theme for the week is about being humble, is about humility, seeing it, recognizing it, understanding it, checking that you have enough of it, not too much and not too little. Our first tarot card we have is the Knight of Cups, and he loves with a big heart. I mean, look at him. He's got his hand on his heart. He's offering you a glass of something magical, something special, but just his body language, just his posture. He's coming to you, you know, with, with truth and honesty and integrity. He's coming to you from a humble place, and he's saying to you, I want to be with you. I want to see you. I want to, I want to connect with you. I want to be your friend. I want to spend this time with you. So he's being very humble. He's, he's got no expectations. He's not making the assumption that you're on board and that you're willing and able to, to have this, this moment in time with him. He's sort of making an offer, making a gesture, and he's humble enough to recognize that if it doesn't suit you, you're going to say, no, thank you, and you're going to walk off. And yes, he'll be devastated, but he'll also be okay with it. So what I'm taking from our Knight of Cups here is he is humble enough. He has enough humility within him to make the offer, to make the gesture, but to also accept your response. And Gemini, maybe this is something that you need to do this week, is to put yourself out there. 
put that offer out there and say, hey, I have a I have a glass of something fabulous. Would you like to share it with me? Would you like to, you know, would you like to, to share this moment? Um, but to not have expectations and also to not get overly disappointed when the person, I don't want to say person turns you down and rejects you, but maybe they have another engagement. Maybe their circumstances, all right? But it's about being humble enough to put yourself out there. We also have the Ace of Swords, which I just adore because the Ace of Swords is telling you, let's think differently. Let's, let's Let's come up with new strategies. Let's let's allow inspiration to strike us in a way that is maybe a little bit unusual, a little bit different from the way it's been before. So the Ace of Swords is basically saying to you that, you know, you've got to try something new. You've got to come up with a new idea, a new strategy in order to put yourself forward. And maybe the new idea and strategy is your humility. OK, maybe it is just being a little bit more humble in your approach, in the way that you interact, in the way that you connect and not being so forceful, not being so like I, I want to say arrogant, but I'm, I'm afraid to use the word arrogant. So it's about coming up with new strategies, coming up with new ideas, coming up with new thought patterns to put yourself forward, to present yourself to somebody. And when I say present yourself to somebody, I'm not talking only in the romantic terms, like maybe there is. A challenge that you have and you need somebody's help you need to present yourself to them to ask for help maybe um, you want to join a, a new group you need to present yourself to the group in order to to find out about joining and you don't want to walk in there with too much or, or too little of this humility we need to find that balance because Gemini life is pretty tough <laughs> We have the Ten of Wands, and you can see how she is struggling. She's got to get up these stairs, okay? There is, her, there is her, her home base, but this bag is bursting. This bag is so full, and it is so heavy, and it is literally bursting. But she is trying. She has tried carrying it. She has tried throwing it. She has tried. Now she's literally dragging it up the stairs. You can see by the expression on her face, she is struggling. So this is acknowledgement from Spirit Gemini that, that you're struggling. But sometimes... If you have enough humidity in your life, you could actually stop and ask for help. But sometimes when we don't have, and when we're too stubborn, and when we're too whatever, we, we tend to try and do things on our own. So it is about finding a way to put yourself out there, to come up with new ways and strategies, and not feel like you have to take it all on, on your own. That is what it means to be humble. That is what it means to have a good dose of humility in your life. So Gemini, and I'm going to leave the reading there for you. I do hope that uh, your week is amazing. I do hope your week is fabulous. Sending you much love and many blessings. And until we connect again, take care Gemini. Cancerians, hello and welcome. Let's get into your reading and see what this week ahead has in store for you. So I am going to give the cards a shuffle. This is the Roots and Wings Oracle. And let's see what it has to say. What is the theme for Cancerians for the week ahead? So Cancerians, your theme is, drumroll please, gratitude. Oh, you know what? I am such an advocate for gratitude. Gratitude is everything, isn't it just? Gratitude is everything. And you know what, Cancerians, what you need to understand, I'm going to shuffle the tarot while we talk about gratitude. When the gratitude card comes up as a theme, it's not telling you that you haven't been grat grateful. It's not telling you that, uh, you know, you've been slacking in that department. It's just saying that maybe your your focus has shifted and that maybe sometimes we, we're struggling with something and the, we're trying to find solutions and answers and outcomes, but sometimes we forget that gratitude is the answer, that gratitude is everything that we need it to be. So it's about just reminder that uh, we need to just slow down, we need to just uh, focus, and we need to practice daily gratitude. So I am such a gratitude advocate. I practice gratitude in my life every single day, all day long. You know, if something bad happens, um, I am grateful for that experience. I find a way to, to turn it into a positive, to be grateful for it. And by doing that, I tend to have less problems and more things to be grateful for. So it's a shift of mindset, it's a shift of focus, um, and it works. It absolutely works to bring, to elevate your life to a better place. But let's see what Tara wants to say about gratitude for Cancerians for the week ahead. So our first card we have is the Queen of Swords. Oh, I love her. She is just fabulous. <laughs> we also have the Page of Pentacles. 
and we have oh there we go the five of pentacles so we've got the two pentacle cards the um, cancerians and pentacles is about our money it's about our stuff it's about our possessions it's about our values it's about the things that we measure our success and failure in life by so for some people it'll be money for some people it'll be love for some people it'll be possessions you know some people feel like if they drive a really nice car that that means that they have succeeded in life some people feel like if they have a good handbag or a nice pair of shoes that then they they're happy so everybody measures their success differently for me it's how many tarot decks I have I'm joking <laughs> <laughs> All right, but what it is, it's about practicing gratitude for what you do have and what you don't have in life because when something goes wrong, and that's what that card, that's why I keep going there. Five of Pentacles is not a fabulous card, you can see that by the artwork. You know, it's not a card of like, oh, yay, Five of Pentacles. No, Five of Pentacles is a card of, of hardship, it's a card of struggle, it's the card of, of, of feeling, you know, as if things are, are really difficult in your life. But the Five of Pentacles is also a card that says, right, let's test your gratitude instead of focusing on the thing that's gone wrong what how can you turn that into an opportunity for gratitude because like I said and I started off even before I shuffled the tarot in saying to you I am an absolute gratitude uh, um, advocate and I do if something goes wrong in my life I find a way of finding a way of making it into something that I am grateful for um, so let's have a look we have got queen of swords so look at her sitting there i mean she means business like you can just see that she means business i would not want to go to her and ask for a cup of tea because she would probably use that sword and take my head off <laughs> but i would love to go to him and ask for a cup of tea because he looks like that cup of tea is going to be so full of fun that cup of tea is just going to be absolutely fabulous but let's go back to our queen of swords she means business she says what's on her mind she doesn't mince her words she is very direct and very to the point she doesn't care if she offends you okay but how did she get to that position she got to that position by knowing her strengths and her weaknesses okay and we can be grateful because maybe cancerians this is you this week that you need to know your strengths and weaknesses and when you are in an area of strength it's about being assertive enough confident enough to sit there and not pretend that you're not doing well for yourself and to be grateful that you have an opportunity in some aspects of your life to be queen of swords okay then we have our page of pentacles and the energy shifts quite so she's very stern she's very direct she's very proper and she's very to the point and then we get our page of pentacles who's like oh let me show you a magic trick you know and and he wants to make you laugh and he wants to make you happy and he wants to and he's like oh look 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 at this look at this look at this look at this he's that kind of person where he just wants to put on a show the whole time um and he's very good at what he does, but it's almost like he doesn't have purpose, that he doesn't have direction. And Cancerians, you need to understand that you are both of these people. Maybe not at the same time, but you are both of these people. And you've got to be grateful for that. You've got to be grateful that you can be this person who has purpose, who has drive, who has ambition, who knows their worth. And you can also be this person who just wants to make people happy. And there is, there is reason to be grateful for both of those. What we don't do, and Cancerians, I know we're emotional. I know we feel in a big way. You know, you guys feel things in a much bigger way than, than most other people. But when something goes wrong, when things aren't quite according to plan, when, when, when we're not in either of these two spaces, we need to make sure that we don't slip into the dark side, okay? Because you know what? Life is full of successes, happy moments, and failures, you know, struggles and difficulties. That, that's how it is. But it's about learning to turn this into one of these moments that will change your reality. And we need to be grateful for all the times that we are successful and accomplished, that we are nurturing and silly, and for when we have struggles and difficulties. Because this is life. This is exactly what life is. And this is what you need to be practicing gratitude for. So Cancerians, I'm going to leave that there with you. I do wish you an amazing week ahead. As always, with love and blessings from my heart to yours. And until we connect again, take care. Leo, hello and welcome. Let's get into your reading and see what this week ahead has in store for you. So Leo Roots and Wings Oracle is going to give us the theme for the week ahead for all Leo energy. Let's cut the deck and see what the theme 
is. So Leo, your theme for the week ahead is storm. All right, so storm, yeah, storm is not fabulous. Here we have some lightning, you can see some rain, some stormy clouds, and here we have the land. But I personally, I'm going to shuffle the tarot while we, we chat about the storm. You know, personally, I love a storm because what does the storm do? It clears the air. It clears the air, it, 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 you know, just after a storm, um, excuse the dog's barking, after a storm, everything is just brighter, the colors are brighter, the, the air is cleaner, we, we seem to, to be able to breathe a little bit better, but yes, while we're going through the storm, it can be awfully scary, um, you know, because we don't want uh, danger and, and, and stuff like that, and also a storm is very unpredictable, we never know, like, how bad is it going to be, what, what's actually going to happen, we know that storms happen, we know it's an Inevitable. You know, you live on Earth. Earth is, is made up of storms. And sometimes you can go weeks and weeks and weeks with no storm. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have, you're in storm season and it's one storm after another. And sometimes the storms bring floods. Sometimes the storms bring fire. Sometimes they bring collapse. And sometimes they just bring a little bit of rain and a little bit of cleansing and then they move on. One thing you have to understand though, Leo, is that storms are temporary. Storms never last. They never hang around for long. They may last a couple of days, but they do eventually dissipate. And that, if you're worried, if you're anxious, if you're nervous, if you're going through storms in your life, metaphysically speaking, if you're going through any storms in your life, just keep reminding yourself that this too shall pass. Let's see what the tarot wants to say about the storms that you may be enduring this week. So the first card we have is the King of Cups. Let's stick him over there. Our second card we have, Leo, is the Page of Swords. I love her. I love her. And we have the Strength card. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So this is basically just to put it into a very simple nutshell for you, Leo. Um, yes, you may be enduring a few storms in your life at the moment, but nothing that you can't handle. Like, I'm looking at this. Nothing that you can't handle. So my storm outside at the moment is that the monkeys are visiting. So hence why the dogs are uh, misbehaving. I do apologize. So storms are happening. Storms are inevitable. But actually, you've got this under control. Let's have a look at them individually. We've got the King of Cups. There he sits in his chair. We have got uh, um, a beautiful gold goldfish swimming around him. But look how comfortable and relaxed he is. Can you see that? He's like so comfortable in his chair. He's drinking a glass of something fabulous. He's got a beautiful smile on his face. Life is actually pretty awesome. So even though he's underwater and the, the current and everything is flowing around him, he's not stressed. The storms can happen. He knows that he's going to get through this. He knows that he's going to be okay because he's in control of the way that he reacts to his external circumstances okay he's in control of the way that he reacts and that's why he's going to be okay we then have the page of swords so she's i mean just look at her hair it's fabulous the wind is taking her the birds are playing with her hair she's she's balancing a sword in her hand but she's also got this book of knowledge which is bringing magic to the situation so page of swords is about gaining knowledge gaining understanding so that you can do things in a better way. And this is what the storms do. Every time you have a storm in your life, Leo, it's an opportunity to do things differently, to learn about yourself, to learn about circumstance, to learn about situation, so that the next time it happens, you can react and respond and handle it in a better way. And the more storms you have, the better you handle them, the easier they are to navigate. And that's why you can just sit comfortably and say, I got this under control. We have the strength card, which is just, I mean, hello, it's beautiful. Absolutely. So here we have this lady, a very delicate, beautiful lady. And she has tamed the big, massive beast of a lion. They are, they are operating together. They are working together. There is no fear. There is no judgment. There is no apprehension. They actually, and, and I mean, Leo, that's you. <laughs> so it is about taming the storm within. I do apologize terribly about the dogs. The monkeys are obviously going to hover for a bit. They sit high up in the tree, um, and um, yeah, then the dogs can see them, but the dogs can't get to them, and it's almost like the monkeys taunt them, hence the storm. <laughs> All right, Leo, so you were stronger than you realize. You have this, okay? You have this in the bag. You know exactly how to navigate the storms. It's about just, you know, going with the flow, knowing that you're going to be okay, knowing that you can handle this, but it's also about learning. Like, okay, this particular storm has got a little bit of lightning, so I mustn't stand out in the open. It's about 
learning from the way that it's gone before so that you can adjust the way that you handle it going now and know that you are stronger than you realize so when you feel like everything's going to fall apart when you feel like you know you're you're hitting rock bottom that's when you know that you're actually stronger than you realize and you can actually turn this around so leo let me go and make my dogs quiet um, <laughs> sending you much love and many blessings navigate your storms with confidence navigate your storms with ease and until we connect again take care Virgo hello and welcome let's get into your reading and see what this week ahead has in store for you all right I am giving the Roots and Wings Oracle a shuffle. This is going to give us our theme for the week ahead. Let's put them together. Let's cut the deck. What is the theme for Virgo for the week ahead? So Virgo, your theme from Roots and Wings Oracle is home. Oh, how beautiful is that? How absolutely. So the focus is on home. The focus is on happiness. The focus is on whatever home is to you. Let's shuffle the tarot while we talk about home. So home is the place where we're supposed to feel safe and secure. Home is the place where we go at the end of the day to rest, to rejuvenate, to replenish, to, to all of those kind of things. Home is the place where we sleep, where we recharge, rejuvenate our souls and our hearts and our lives. So home is the place where we have our family, our children, our parents, whoever it may be. Home could be the place where you are completely on your own, but it's the place where you are supposed to be the happiest. Okay, dropping cards because I am just that kind of a shuffler. Right, tarot is shuffled. Let's cut the deck to see how it or what it wants to add to our situation of home. So our first tarot card we have Virgo is the Ace of Swords. Let's leave it over there. Our second card we have is the Lovers. Oh, this is interesting. And our oh, beautiful, we have the Ten of Pentacles. So I will tell you that these two have already made an appearance this week. So this is the second showing um, this week, which is, which is interesting because that talks about message for the collective. So home is important this week, whatever home is for you, whatever it means. Whether, whether home is just an activity that brings you joy and happiness and makes you feel safe and secure, or whether it is your actual home. And it might not be that home is fabulous. It may be that you have some challenges within the home that we need to resolve. But looking at what we've got here, I don't feel as if that is the situation. It is about happiness. It is about joy. It is about abundance. We have the Ace of Swords. And the Ace of Swords is about new ideas. Okay, new ideas, new inspiration, new thought processes. Okay, so maybe there's a thought that you've been having about your home. Um, maybe a change that you've been thinking about or an addition that you've been thinking about or something new that you've been thinking about that you want to introduce or implement or, in, or bring into your home. And a spirit is saying to you that this is definitely a positive. Okay, Virgo? So if you've been thinking about something like, oh, maybe we should adopt a new dog. <laughs> maybe we should, uh, you know, just extend uh, the property or maybe like whatever the thought is, it's definitely something worth investigating around the home to bring happiness and joy to the family dynamic. Because that's what we've got going here, Virgo, is family dynamic. We have got the lover's card, all right? And the lover's card is the card of intimacy. It is the card of togetherness. It is the card of two people coming together with love, unconditional love, okay? But it is also the card that says you chose this, that this is the love that you chose for yourself. And love is what makes a home a home, isn't it? So there are thoughts, there are ideas, there are strategies that you are thinking in order to make your home better. Maybe it's an idea around your partner um, of something that you can do to, to rekindle love, to bring that spark back into our connection. Maybe that's what this is. But whatever it is, it's time for you in your home to come up with this new idea, to acknowledge it for yourself and to implement it. Because that's going to bring you the happiness to the home life that you are looking for. Ten of Pentacles is the card of legacy. It's the card of big picture, okay? It's the card of perfect happy family. And I know you're probably saying that, oh, but those kind of photos are very staged. So what? It still represents what family means and what family is to you and what your family is. So family, home, love, 
is what's important to you. But there are ideas that you need to work on this week. There are ideas around family home that you have been toying with, playing with, considering. And Virgo, this is Spirit saying to you that this is the week to make it real. This is the week to bring it into play. This is the week to acknowledge it and to, to make it make it part of your life and part of your reality. So whatever that idea is, think about it, allow it to come to you, share it with your family, put it out there and make it real, make it happen. This is the week for amazing, I, I, I'm actually going to say amazing additions to the family. Like I, I'm just going to go there, all right? I'm just going to go there. Amazing additions to the family. I'm not talking, when we talk about additions to the family, it doesn't necessarily have to be children or pregnancy or anything like that. It could be bringing a new piece of furniture into the house. It could be bringing an animal into the house. It could be bringing another body into the house, okay? Have somebody else come and live with you, move in with your, your significant other. But this is the week for an addition to your home. I'm going to leave it there for you, Virgo, because yo, this is going to be a good one for you. I can't wait to see how it all unfolds for you. As always, <laughs> with love and blessings from my heart to yours. And until we connect again, take care, Virgo. Hello and welcome, Libra. And for those Librians who are celebrating a birthday this week, happy, happy birthday. Hope you have just the most amazing birthday and the most amazing week. Let's shuffle the cards and see what this week has in store for you. So Virgo giving Roots and Wings a shuffle. Roots and Wings is going to give us the theme for the week ahead for all Libra energy. Right, cards are shuffled, cut and dealt. Let's see what does Roots and Wings have to say for Libra for this week. We have got the voice. So here we have this open mouth and we have the earth and we have these two people standing on it. It's about speaking your truth, isn't it? It's about opening your mouth and seeing what comes out. I love that. Let's give the <laughs> let's give the tarot a shuffle as we ask for further clarity guidance on what is it that you need to be speaking? What is the truth that needs to come out of your mouth? What is it that you need to be voicing this week, Virgo? Or oh, Libra, I'm calling you Virgo, look at me. Just done, Virgo. So Libra, let's see your birthday week. Well, for some of you, some of you, some, some Librians. So for this week, 9 to 15 October, for Libra energy, what does the voice mean? Where does the voice fit in? How do we speak our truth? Where do we need to speak our truth? And what is it relating to? Tarot card number one, we have Page of Pentacles making his second appearance this week. We have got the Justice card. Oh, Libra, that's yours. That's your card. And we have the Three of Cups, which is my favorite tarot card. Well, one of my two favorite tarot cards. So Libra, this is an interesting one. So the first card we have is this Page of Pentacles. Look at that expression on his face. Isn't he just the cutest? Like he is so excited about something that he's done. And he's going like, look, 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 look. You know, he, he's so enthusiastic. He's done something for the first time. He's not quite sure how he did it. He's not quite sure even what it looks like or what it's supposed to be. But he's excited. <laughs> he, he's trying to be very practical. He's trying to be down to earth. But his excitement is getting the better of him. And, you know, Libra, sometimes we need to be like that. Sometimes maybe you are like that okay but sometimes it's about recognizing and and seeing the things that you're actually capable of doing or capable of achieving things that might catch you by surprise but if you don't tell people look 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 they may miss your moment <laughs> they may miss your accomplishment your achievement and the things that you are doing i'm not saying that this is a once-off but you know when you're still grasping when you're still learning when you're still experiencing we don't always get things right the first time so, but it is about, you know, climbing out of your comfort zone ever so slightly, trying something out of the norm, but making sure that you're expressing yourself, making sure that if you want an audience, that you have the audience, that you've got the audience, that the audience has come to you. We have the justice card. Now, the justice is the card of truth. The justice is the card of things being correct. Justice is the card of balance, but it's the card of integrity. And it's the card of everything that you are, everything that you stand for, Libra. You know, justice is who you are. Justice is what, what, what matters. It's about fairness. It's about harmony. It's about truth. It's about responsibility and accountability. So, 
we need to speak out about the things that are important to us. We need especially things that you're trying for the first time, things that you may be a little bit excited about. You need to be sharing that because there is truth in what you're saying. There is truth in what you're doing. And people need to hear what it is that you have to say because when they hear what you have to say, when they hear how you've done something and how it's turned out and how it's worked out for you, that's where the happiness and the joy comes in. So Libra, this is definitely a week for celebrating. A week of celebrating you speaking out about things that are important to you, things that you've tried, things that you're excited about. <laughs> and speak your truth. Don't worry about, you know, the consequences. Don't worry about whether people agree or disagree with you because actually that's not what matters right now. What matters right now is you speaking, expressing the enthusiasm, the creativity, the understanding, the truth of what it is that you're going through and knowing that it's going to bring cause for celebration amongst your people. Okay. So Libra, an interesting week. You know, justice is never far from Libra energy because you guys are all about balance and fairness and harmony and all of those kind of things, which is really great. But sometimes we can get excited and we should get excited and we need to express that excitement because, and we need to express it with the people who mean something to us because that brings everything in. That brings synergy, that brings cohesion, that brings understanding, but it also brings love and harmony. And that's what we've got. So so it's about time for you to open your mouth and to express and to communicate and to, to share whatever it is that you are excited and passionate about, knowing that it's going to bring truth and harmony to everybody in your life. So Libra, I'm going to leave that message there for you. As I said, for those of you celebrating a birthday this week, happy birthday. For the rest of you, happy birthday month. <laughs> Have an amazing week. And until we connect again, take care Libra. Right, welcome Scorpio. Let's get into your reading and see what this week ahead has in store for you. We're going to start off with the Roots and Wings Oracle, just giving it a little shuffle. And uh, let's cut the deck and see what is the theme for the week ahead for all Scorpios. So the theme for the week ahead is... We have got Father, so that's a very interesting card. So here we have, he's obviously a mature deer, he's got his antlers, very complex uh, animal, but he stands for structure, he stands for discipline, he stands for authority. I'm going to shuffle the tarot while we chat about Father. So obviously Scorpio, not all of you are fathers. <laughs> some of you may be feminine, some of you may not have a father figure in your life, some of you may not be a father figure to, to everybody, but we have to understand what does Father mean? Father is somebody who has a bit of an authority. Um, I'm describing the archetype of a father. So somebody who has a bit of an authority, somebody who is there to support, somebody who is there to nurture, but not on an emotional sense, but probably to nurture more on a physical sense. Um, father is somebody who also takes a little bit of a disciplinarian kind of uh, um, um, role um, in the situation, but also somebody who's more down to earth and more practical and more more real, if I can put it that way. Whereas, you know, the mother figure is more nurturing and caring and sympathetic. The father is more down to earth and more practical. So what is this saying to you? Scorpio, this is saying to you for your week ahead, that the theme for you is going to be about taking a long, hard look at your life, your circumstances and your situations, and seeing where do you need to be more of a father archetype? Where do you need to be more um, nurturing, but in a practical, down-to-earth way, um, and, and just a more logical kind of way, let's put it that way. Let's see what the tarot wants to add, cutting the deck. Our first tarot card, Scorpio, we have, oh look at that, I love that, the Page of Cups. I love Page of Cups, he is gorgeous. We also have the Knight of Cups, okay, okay, there's a theme here, there's a theme, and we have the Death card, right, nobody's dying, okay, Scorpio, let's understand, but Scorpios, they, they recognize the, the, the death and the change and the, the all of those kind of things, right, let's, let's just tidy up and put them into perspective, so these two gentlemen, I mean, isn't it just so interesting that we've got a genderless person, and we've got the two masculines and we've got the father over here. So there's definitely a theme here. First of all, and it's, it's quite interesting the way that these two gentlemen have shown themselves because we've got the older gentleman 
in the younger uh, um, category and we've got the younger gentleman in the more superior category than this one okay so it's, it, it's almost like a bit of role reversal and if we look at this particular card we've got role reversal taking place here as well because here we have the human form this is a genderless human form and then we have got the the next stage which is the skeleton form if you look behind this human form here we have got the moon and here we've got the sun sometimes we can look at it as silver and gold but whatever it is it's about the opposites it's about how we transition from one state or form to another so it the, the death card is about change and transformation and not about death and dying and if we look at our father figure here and i mentioned his antlers earlier on if his antlers fall off or if they break in a fight or if something happens to them he does not cease to operate but his antlers oopsie i didn't mean to 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 move the card but his antlers cease to exist in whichever form they were if we look at this gentleman here okay so he is page of cups page of cups is somebody who gets excited over the simplest things page of cups is somebody who gets you know and if you think about it when we get to this age or this stage of our lives once we've retired and we're not chasing the dream and chasing goals and 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 looking for money the whole time suddenly we we go and we play sport and we we hang out with our friends and we play chess and them in the park and you know and we get excited about the simplest of things so it's almost like we're going back to the basics of the things that actually matter and mean something in life because we have been too too dedicated too hard-working too focused to father figure and now it's like let's go back to our childhood let's go back to simple but not losing our charm not losing our knowledge and our understanding because here he's holding on to his cup and he's going yay look at me i have i have i have and he's saying i have and i'd like to share it with you he's got his hand on his heart and he's offering it to you and he's saying come experience this with me experience this with me so scorpio what is this actually saying to you for the week ahead because we are looking at just a short period seven days you need to take a long, hard, nurturing look at your life without emotions, okay? We need to take the, the emotion, and both of these are emotional cards. We need to take the emotion out of the situation. We need to be logical. We need to be practical. We need to be down to earth about what excites you and about what your passion and your drives are. Because this is the week to bring about change, Scorpio. This is the week where we put these things into perspective. We let go of antlers that no longer serve us. We, we, we don't hold emotion to it. We let it go, understanding that it served its function, it served its purpose, and it's time for it to go. And understanding that when we change form from one state to another, all we're doing is going through the evolution of life but it is about recognizing and understanding that the person you used to be is not the person you are now and is not the person that you will be in the future so this is a week for some personal growth for some personal evolution some person personal change but it's personal change that doesn't really change who you are okay so you remain the powerful masculine deer even though you've lost one of your antlers but you still have your passions your drives and your enthusiasms even if they look a little bit different so quite an interesting week for you scorpio i actually look forward to see how this unfolds um and i'm gonna say to you with the death card there with the father figure here the basic message here is if anything is not serving you if anything is not bringing you joy and bringing you passion it's time to let it go it's time to let it go and don't be emotional about it be quite logical pragmatic is the word that i hear you know just be quite pragmatic about it and let it go and give yourself permission to advance in this life and this is a great week to make big changes scorpio leaving it there love and blessings from my heart to yours and until we connect again take care Hello and welcome, Sag. Welcome to your Week Ahead Taroscopes. Let's get straight into the reading and see what the Week Ahead has in store for you. So, Sag, I'm going to give a quick shuffle to the Roots and Wings Oracle to see what your theme for the Week Ahead is. I'm just doing the one shuffle. Let's cut the deck and grab a card. So, Sagittarius, your theme for the Week Ahead is, drumroll please, transformation transformation and here we have a person becoming a butterfly 
Or is it a butterfly becoming a person? I'm not quite sure which way it goes, but one thing's for sure, neither of those two actually fit in with each other. You know, people don't become butterflies and butterflies don't become people, but transformation is the ability. I'm going to shuffle the tarot while we chat about it. Transformation is changing an aspect of who you are into something completely different um, and trusting that it's going to be good for you, trusting that it's going to be better and trusting that it's going to to, to fit whatever your requirements and um, let me start that again. Oh my gosh, Sage, getting so tongue-tied. Um, trusting that whatever you evolve into is exactly what you need to evolve into. So transformation is about letting go of expectations, letting go of preconceived notions, and just going with the flow, going with the evolution, the change, and just trusting and hoping that whatever you become is exactly what you need to become. So let's see from the tarot where this change is necessary, where this change is needed, and what this transformation is going to look like. So Sage, one, the first card we have is the Queen of Cups. I love her. She is just amazing. We also have the Four of Wands. And we also have the Hermit, right? So three absolutely gorgeous cards. I say that about all of them. Um, <laughs> let's just rearrange them quickly, make them uh, symmetrical, make them easy to see on the screen. Okay, so set. It's a week of change. It's a week of transformation. It's a week of growth and it's a week of evolution. First tarot card we have is the Queen of Cups. Now she sits on her throne. Notice her throne is not oversized. She looks amazing. She looks so fabulous. She looks very comfortable, but she also looks very approachable, even though she's got her legs crossed. She's sitting like a lady, but um, she's got her legs crossed. She's being very uh, proper, if I can put it that way. But I look. she looks like you can approach her and have a conversation. So she is sitting there, and she's not actively involved in what everybody's doing, but I can assure you she's keeping a very close eye on what everybody's doing, how they're doing it, who they're doing it with, etc. So she is watching all the people who mean something to her. She's observing, she's watching, and should something go wrong, she'll be the first one to jump up and run to their aid to assist. Um, but she's just sitting there. Think of her like a mom watching the small children playing. You know, they're not getting involved. They're allowing the children to experiment. They're allowing the children to eat the sand. They're allowing the children to do whatever it is that children do. But they're keeping a very watchful eye over. So this is I take this for you as a message from spirit that you are being guided you are being watched you are being supported as you go through this transformation so don't ever think that you're alone don't ever think that you have to figure this out on your own because this is almost spirit saying we got you okay we might not interfere we might not stop you from eating the handful of sand because we know it's not going to cause you any harm but it's the learning experience that it's all about we then also get this four of wands. Now, in this four of wands, we have the, this couple, okay? We have these two gentlemen who are clearly besotted with each other. They are celebrating life. They are celebrating union and connection and commitment, okay? So, they have come together as two equals. They have come together for a long term. This is the card of commitment. This is the card of longevity. This is the card of understanding togetherness over an extended period of time and it's celebrating that it's acknowledging and it's celebrating that so Sagittarius this is spirit saying to you this is a week of change what is the change that they've endured well they've gone from being singular to being a duo okay they've gone to from being two strong independent uh, individuals to becoming a couple so it's about understanding that the change has to happen when two parts of ourselves or two things or two aspects of ourselves come together to form a new whole. So I am going to say to you, Sagittarius, that this is a week of growth. Now, it's interesting that we've got the, the union here, the celebrating the commitment over here, and then we've got the card of solitude and... Um, solitude and introspection so it's quite interesting and my interpretation of that is that this transformation that you're going through this week is not a connection between you and an external it's actually two parts of yourself internally that internally okay so two parts of your psyche two parts of your soul that are going to come together and the person that you are becoming at the moment the person that you are transforming into is somebody who nurtures who's somebody who is kind and generous but somebody who 
understands who they are at the deepest level and is comfortable with their own self on the deepest level. Somebody who doesn't need external validation, who doesn't look for other people to say, yes, you're okay and no, you're not okay. It's somebody who understands that there's always somebody watching. There's always somebody looking after them, but at the same time taking responsibility for their own happiness, for their own commitment. So they're making, so it's almost like Sagittarius, you're making a commitment to yourself this week. Um, to believe in yourself, to listen to yourself, to trust in your own understanding instead of always looking for external validation. So even though your transformation is, to, is into something unusual, half butterfly, half person, you know, even though your transformation is into something a little bit strange and unusual, it's about understanding that that's exactly who you are. So it's embracing whoever you are at the core of your being even if it goes against the norm. Believing in yourself and knowing that you are never alone. Oh, Sage, I love this message for you. Looks like you're in for a fabulously wonderful, amazing week. As always, I'm going to leave it there. Love and blessings from my heart to yours. And until we connect again, take care, Sage. Capricorn, hello and welcome. Let's get into your reading and see what this week has in store for you. So Capricorn, I am now going to shuffle the Roots and Wings Oracle, asking for a single card to represent the theme of the week ahead for you. So what does the week ahead have in store for all Capricorn energies? Right, shuffled, split, card drawn. Let's have a look. Your theme for the week ahead, Capricorn, is night okay so we're talking about the evening we're talking about the night time we're talking about you know the stars the moon and and here we have a beautiful owl that is flying as well i'm going to leave that card there as i shuffle the tarot so what does night time mean night time is the time of rest well for most people there are some people that work in the night time but night time is the time for rest it's the time for for recuperation it's the time for you know just allowing the the, the day to sort of wash over you and and where we eat, we sleep, we rest, we rejuvenate, so that in the morning we are fresh and awake again. In saying that, I also believe that the night time is when a lot of us actually process our emotions. So during the day we put on a happy face, we, we smile, we pretend like we're happy and everything, but it's at the night time that the true self is revealed. It's during the night time that our true self comes to light. And if there is any kind of anxiety or fear or depression or anything, nighttime is generally when that comes to pass. So yeah, there are things that you're going to be dealing with in the nighttime this week. Let's see from the tarot what that might be. So card number one that we have, Capricorn, you see there's the stress, there's the anxiety. We have got the Ten of Swords. We also have, oh my gosh, this Knight of Cups. First of all, he's amazing for you in this reading. But this is also, I think, the third or the fourth time that he's made appearance in this, in this week's readings. Oh, I love that. We have the Eight of Wands as well. So Capricorn, I'm loving this. Let me put the tarot aside Let's even these out and let's see what this means. So I was correct in the way that I interpreted that night card in saying that nighttime is, it's supposed to be when we replenish our energies, when we rest, when we refuel and, and prepare ourselves for the next day. But nighttime is also the time when we reveal our stresses, our anxieties and our worries. So that is exactly what's come through here. So Ten of Swords, as you can see, it is the card of stress, it is the card of anxiety, it is the card of worries. But it is also the card of not giving up. Okay, it is also the card of not giving up because she has got these Ten Swords in her back. She has been stabbed in the back literally okay figuratively literally etc and if you've ever been stabbed in the back you can know how 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 destru destroying it is you know that you just sometimes want to curl into a ball and you know give up but she's not giving up look at her she is pulling herself she's pushing herself up off the floor she is continuing she is straining it is hard it is difficult but you know what she's not giving up her persistence under all circumstances it's what's going to get her through 
And Capricorn, this is Spirit saying to you, no matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult it is. You know, have you ever heard the saying that um, hit rock bottom? You know, have you ever heard that saying when we talk about a person on an emotional level and they say, gosh, they hit rock bottom? So I want you to imagine a ball. And the only ball I have here is a D12 dice. <laughs> so, so humor me. And I know the angle is so wrong because when I drop, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. But if you imagine that this D12 dice that I have is you, and you're falling, okay? And as you're falling, you're turning, and you're going through turmoil, you're going through troubles, you're going through all the difficulties, but the more you fall, the more you're going, the more you're experiencing challenge and difficulty. It's only when you hit rock bottom that you stop. But what happens to a ball? Okay, my ball doesn't bounce, but <laughs> humor me. So if, you're, if this was you, and you were a ball, and you were falling, and when you hit the bottom, you don't go splat. Okay, what happens to a ball is when it hits rock bottom, it immediately, that exertion energy that it's, it, it, it picked up as it was falling, it connects with the ground and it bounces in the opposite direction. And suddenly the ball starts coming up, 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 all the way to the top. Okay, so when we hit rock bottom, we're not actually stopping, we're not actually giving up, but we actually, it's, it's what makes us go in the opposite direction. So sometimes it takes hitting rock bottom in order to change the direction in which we go. And that is what these two cards are talking about. So Capricorn Spirit is saying nighttime is when you're going to do all the work. Because during the day, you're going to smile and you're going to pretend that everything is fabulous. During the day, nobody's going to question that this is you at night. So this is you in the daytime. This is you in the nighttime, okay? And it's during the nighttime that we do the work. During the day, we just smile and look pretty because that's what he does. He smiles and he looks pretty. He is putting on a big show of love and affection. So this is why nobody would ever suspect that this is him in the nighttime. Nobody would ever suspect that this is the same person. And I would imagine, Capricorn, this is the same for you at the moment. Who you are during the day and who you are at night, chalk and cheese. So we're going to do all the work at night. And this is Spirit saying to you, like, the work is actually going to be easier than you expect. Because once we've hit rock bottom and once we start bouncing, we will find a reason to continue. We will find a reason to keep going. And once that... Uh, um, once that, uh, what's the word, the, once that, that momentum, that's the word, once that momentum is in force, that momentum will carry you through right all the way up, where's, where's my dice, <laughs> carry you all the way up to the top again, and everything in the background will be blurry, I'm doing this on purpose, so everything in the background will be a distant memory, okay, so Capricorn, this is a week to actually deal with, to talk about, to process, to, to release all the anxiety and the stress that you are dealing with at the moment, that you are suppressing, that you are holding back. Let's not pretend anymore. Let's be real. Let's be honest, even if it is only at night when you're at home surrounded by your loved ones, so that you can start the healing process and start the movement out of the darkness. Out of the darkness. All right. So Capricorn, definitely an interesting week for you, but I do think it's incredibly positive. I'm not worried about this at all. Because look where we've shifted. We've shifted from having the swords in our back to using the swords as surfboards and flying through the sky away from out of the difficulty, out of the night, out of the darkness. All right. You got this Capricorn. Sending you so much love, sending you so much light. And um, yeah, I look forward to connecting with you again. Take care. Right, so hello and welcome Aquarius. Let's get into your reading and see what the week ahead has in store for you. So Aquarius, I am giving these cards a shuffle. This is the Roots and Wings Oracle. We are going to get the theme for the week ahead from these cards for you. And here we have a card selected. So Aquarius, the theme for the week ahead for you is, drumroll please, home. Oh, I love that. Okay, so it is the card of home. We have a very simple house, but it's not that the simple house that matters. It's what the home that matters. Um, this is the second time that this card has made an appearance this week. I forget which other zodiac got home as the theme, but let's see what this means for you. So Aquarius, what is the definition of home? Home is a place where you go, where you feel safe, where you feel comfortable, where you feel secure. It's the familiar as I said, it's the safety, it's the security, it's all of those things. But home is also the place we go to rest. 
Home is also the place we go to recharge. Home is also the place where we have all the people and the things that we love the most in the world. So home is supposed to be our refuge. It's supposed to be our, our happy place, our happy safe zone. And this is the focus for you this week. What we're going to see is the focus that the home is the happy place or is the focus that the home is not the happy place. Um, but one way or another, the focus for you this week is definitely going to be on the home. Right, let's cut this tarot. And let's see. Oh, cutting all the way at the back. Right, so Aquarius, card number one for you. We have got the King of Cups making in a second appearance this week. We also have the Three of Pentacles. And we have, for you, I oh, love it, the Seven of Wands. All right. So let's put the tarot aside. Let's tidy these up. Oh, it's not too bad. Just shift them over a bit evenly space and all that stuff. Okay. So the theme for you for the week ahead is uh, Aquarius is home. We have got the King of Cups. Now he is completely comfortable. I mean, just look at the way he's sitting. Look at his body language. He is so, I mean, he's he's sitting back. He's got his legs crossed. He's got a, a, a glass of something magical that he's drinking. He is completely comfortable and completely at home in his environment. His environment just so happens to be under the water. Hence, <laughs> hence the goldfish swimming around his head. But you know what? When you're sitting and everything is perfect, everything is taken care of, everything is as it should be, that is when emotionally you are feeling absolutely fabulous. So our focus this week is getting to this point, all right? Is to acknowledge what is working for you, acknowledge what is great, like acknowledge how important that goldfish is to you, acknowledge how important the little pretend uh, uh, pirate ship is in the background, or maybe it's a sailing boat, you know, but it's about acknowledging what makes you happy. When can, when in your life are you this comfortable, this laid back, this relaxed, and this at ease? Okay, and I can promise you it's got to do with your home because he is the king of emotions, all right? Because cups is the suit of emotions and emotions is the suit of home, okay? We also have the three of pentacles and Aquarius, the three of pentacles, here we have a beekeeper. So he is tending to his bees. Yes, he's got his full suit on. He doesn't have protection on his hands, but he is collecting the honey, okay? But he doesn't do it on his own. Yes, there's a little girl there that's helping him, but she's not actually involved in the bees. She's picking the fruit, okay? He's planted the fruit trees to help the bees get the nectar that they need in order to make the honey. So it's a case of the child she, by picking the fruit, she's helping the tree to rejuvenate and regenerate and create more. She's benefiting from picking the fruit because she gets to eat it and share it with her family. Um, but he planted the trees. The trees are helping the bees. The bees are creating the honey. The honey is helping him. It's a circle, all right? Um, it's a, an ecosystem all on its own. <laughs> but the Three of Pentacles is the card of understanding that nobody can do things on their own. Nobody is an island. Nobody can actually handle things all by themselves. It takes, it, it, it takes, what do they say? It takes a village. Have you ever heard that saying? All right. It takes a village to, to raise a kid. It takes a village. It takes a whole group of people to, to raise one person. And that's home for you. So Aquarius, for you at the moment is you've got to ask yourself, am I this content? Am I this happy? Who are the people or like I'm saying people, but we were including the bees and the trees and everything else in it. But what are the things that I work with in order to achieve my happiness, my goals, my home? Okay. Now, the, this last card that we have here, the Seven of Wands. Now, Seven of Wands is quite an interesting one because this lady, I mean, you can see she's got her leg raised. She is ready to kick out if she needs to kick out. She is in a very, very defensive pose okay so here in front of her there are these sticks these wands that are sort of coming at her and she has made the assumption that they're actually here to to hurt her to target her to to inflict some kind of pain on her so she has now adopted a defensive pose and she's keeping them at bay but what we don't know is if these people these ones in these situations we don't know if they're friend or foe she has made the assumption that they are foe, but maybe they're friends. Maybe these are the bees and the little girl and the trees that are helping to make the honey. But if she's keeping everybody at bay, she's not going to achieve the things that she needs to. So the message for you, Aquarius, home is key. 
knowing when it is that you are most comfortable, when it, when it is what it is that takes for you to be this laid back, this chilled, this relaxed, understanding that you can't do this on your own. You know, your home is made up of other people, of other situations and other things, and everything needs to be in perfect divine order in order for the honey to be produced and for you to, to harvest. And if you are keeping people out, if you are stopping people from coming in and assisting you, your home is never going to be the home that you want or need it to be. So it's about letting people in. Okay, so that's the message. I mean, I know it took me a long time to get there. <laughs> but Aquarius, the message for you is that you've got to start letting people in. Stop putting up the barriers and stop saying to everybody, no, 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 I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Let people in. Work together to create a life of bliss and happiness because you deserve a life of bliss and happiness but there are certain things or certain areas or certain circumstances where you are being too defensive and you're keeping people out when actually you should be letting the situations and the circumstances in because you will absolutely benefit from it so this week Aquarius this is where your focus is actually this is where your focus is <laughs> see what you can do to make sure that you're not keeping anybody out unnecessarily all right, Aquarius, wishing you just the best week ever with love and blessings from my heart to yours. And until we connect again, take care. Pisces, hello and welcome. Let's get into your reading and see what the week ahead has in store for you. So Pisces, I am shuffling the Roots and Wings Oracle to see what your theme for the week ahead is going to be. Right, cards are shuffled, let's cut the deck, and let's grab a card off the top. So Pisces, the theme for your week ahead is, drumroll please, dum -da -da -dum, duality, I love that, duality. So here we have two circles, and you know, this one you can see is the, is the reddishy, orangey color, this is the blueies, and together they've created greens, and this is where you live, you live in that space in the middle. Duality. Duality is about uh, opposites coming together and creating something completely different, isn't it? I'm going to shuffle the tarot while we chat about duality. So I do think duality, and it's interesting as well. I'm going to say, you know, Pisces. I'm looking at your, I'm looking at your glyph um, that represents Pisces, and it's two fish coming together. So it's the two fishes, um, and here you've got duality. So Pisces, you guys are very familiar with duality. You're very familiar with coming together. You're very familiar with that joining energy. So let's see why it's important that you have duality as a theme for the week ahead. So we're going to see what the tarot wants to contribute to that. Let's cut the deck. And let's see, card number one. Oh, you know what? This is crazy. This is crazy, Pisces, because you've got the death card, and I think this is the third or the fourth time I'm seeing the death card this week. So immediately, I just want to tell you that uh, no, nobody's dying, all right? Nobody's dying, but we are blending. Like it. Okay, we also have the King of Wands. I love him. Love, love, love. And, aha, we have the Eight of Swords. Right, Pisces. Let's check this out. Let me just spread up the cards and make them a little bit even so that it's a bit clearer to see. And it's interesting because as I'm looking at all of this, right, I am seeing all the colors of all of these three cards in this card of duality. Like all of the colors, the blues are there, the grays are there, the greens are there, the reds, the oranges, yellows, the purples are even there. Look right here is the purple. There's the pink of her shorts. Like we've got all the colors here. Like can you just... Can you just, it, it's like, you know what, this is the week of blending. So let, let's talk about this, Pisces. We've got the death card. Now, I want to just look at the artwork of this death card, because first of all, this is an amazing deck. Um, <laughs> not only is it pretty on the eyes, but the symbolism is just really significant. We have a individual over here. Um, and and this is the this is the upside down version of them, right? This is the, the the person who they used to be, and what we have over here is the person that they've become. So we've gone from being flesh to being bone. Okay, now we look behind the person, and my my first reaction is that that's the moon, and behind the skull, behind the skeleton, we have the sun. But it could also be silver and gold. But whatever it is, it's opposites. Okay, this is the card of opposites. This is the card of changing from one state or form 
into another state or form. If I turn the card around, okay, it's, it's the same. We just, we have a different form there and a different form there. Who knows which is up and which is down, which is right and which is wrong. There is no right and wrong. But this is, and it's interesting that we've got the two circles blending and we've got the two circles blending. Like, I, I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. So the death card, what is it actually saying, Pisces? The death card is saying to you that this is the week to change, to transform. You have been two different versions of yourself for the longest time. You have, and you know what, a lot of us do this. The person we are at work and the person we are at home are often two very different versions of ourselves. So we wear these different hats and we wear these different personas and we, we wear these different attitudes and, and whatever else. But this is Spirit saying that this week we actually need to come together as one. Okay? We need to take all these different parts of yourself. And we need to bring them all into becoming a singular, as opposed to being all these disconnected selves. So we have to let go of preconceived notions, and we have to embrace our fears, our doubts, and our insecurities in order to succeed. So this is a week of releasing, letting go of, but amalgamating. I think amalgamating is the word that I want to use. Now, I want to talk about these two cards because what we've got going on here, Pisces, we have the King of Wands. And the King of Wands, he looks so comfortable, but look at his body language. He's sitting on the edge of this of this of his throne, but he's also leaning forward. It's almost like he's he's quite assertive. He's leaning into the situation, okay? He is dressed fabulously. I mean purple suit and all. He looks amazing, but he he exudes confidence, doesn't he? Like nobody's gonna question him. Nobody's gonna go up to him and say, Who are you and what are you doing here? Because he looks like he belongs there. So he is exuding confidence. But this is you on an external level. This is you on one level, okay? This is you on one level. And then you, Pisces, on the other level is the complete opposite, where suddenly we are barefoot, we are out in the cold, in the dark, we are vulnerable, and we're sitting behind a cage. And we're feeling trapped, alone, isolated, you know, stuck. So externally, we're pretending and we're like, oh, you know what, life is good, life is fabulous, I'm amazing, you're amazing, everybody's amazing, wah, 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 wah. But internally, we have the opposite. Internally, we are feeling very much, yeah, restricted, okay? So the duality is that you are both of these things. The duality is, the reality is that you are both of these things. So message for you, Pisces, is that this week, let's acknowledge where we are strongest and let's acknowledge where we are weakest because we are always both of these. And you know what? I know it's human nature that we're always trying to be this one. We always put all our effort and all our energy into being this and we try and hide this. We try and pull this one down as much as we can, get it out of the way because we don't actually want to deal with this. We don't actually want to be this person. We want to be this person. So we try and and pretend and we put all our energy and all our time and all our energy into being this person, the King of Wands. But the reality is we are both. We are all. And that is where duality comes in. Duality is recognizing and accepting that you are all things and all things are you. So it is a week of transformation and change. It is a week of recognizing that actually the truth of who you are is this bit in the middle where you have both pieces, separate pieces that actually come together and form a single. So let's rather do that. Bring them together and let them form a single. Let them form a a dual thing. Understand that this is who you are and this is not bad. This is not bad. Recognizing that you have both strength and weakness is not a negative. It's actually really, really important. Um, and, and it is the truth of who you are. So embrace it, Pisces. Embrace it. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed to become whole. Okay? Don't be afraid to bring your two circles together to form one bigger circle as opposed to two small circles that, that can't really operate. Let's become one big circle of love, of happiness, of truth, and of less weakness. Gosh, Pisces, that's a really, really important message, a deep, deep message, and I hope it resonates with you. Lots of love and blessings, as always, Pisces, sending you all the love in the world, and until we connect again, from my heart to yours, take care.